Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Respectable viewers and listeners, welcome back after the break to continue with the program of Sirat e Nur. I was concluding the hadith mentioned in Bukhari Sharif in the uh, first volume, page 379, that when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam was performing his wudu, then the companions it was as though they would almost quarrel and fight with one another, one another to get a bit of the blessings from the droplets of the wadu, meaning the wadu is the water that uh, the Prophet والسلام, used which would come off from the sacred body of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And that in fiqhi terms it is known as al-ma'ul musta'mal, water which has been used. Now, water which has been used when it comes off our bodies, that is tahir, but it is not mutahir, meaning that it is puri, it is pure, uh, purified. It is a, it is pure water. However, it is not a purifier. It is not mutahir. It cannot be used to do wudu with. But this is the difference. One of the differences amongst many great differences between us and the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. That water that is coming off the blessed sacred body of Rasulullah does not become ordinary because it has come into contact with the sacred and blessed body of Rasulullah that this, it, it, it is full of barakah, it is full of blessings and the Sahaba would almost quarrel with one another realizing the odor, uh, realizing the importance sorry, of that wadu that they would almost fight one another and it is their iman, their mahabbat their, uh, the ta'veem and taqreem that they adopted, that they demonstrated the way they expressed obedience to the commands of Allah and His Rasul, the way they followed the instructions and commands of Allah and His Rasul, the way they did the ittiba, we are required to adopt their ways. This has been declared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, uh, Quran al-Majid, and endorsed by Him. It further goes, and mentions وَإِذَا تَكَلَّمَ خَفَضُوا أَسْوَاتَهُمْ And when he speaks, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they completely lower their voices once again to express veneration, to demonstrate veneration and reverence to him. And وَمَا يُحِدُّونَ إِلَيْهِ النَّظَرَ إِلَيْهِ النَّظَرَ تَعْظِيمَ اللَّهُ And they do not dare to step the boundary uh, overstep the boundary, cross the boundary to transgress by um, they consider this an act of transgression if they would endlessly gaze towards him. Out of his veneration, they do not do that and they just glance at the Prophet wasallam whenever it is possible. So this is just one example mentioned in Kitabu Shurut of Sahih Bukhari of how um, Hazrat, uh, uh, this companion uh, of Rasulullah wasallam he later was blessed with Islam and became a companion. At that time, he was not uh, a Muslim and he returned to his uh, followers and expl explained to them, to the Kuffar of Quraysh, that this is a leader, uh, a unique leader. And I've never seen such a leader uh, who has been, who has been, who is being venerated as much as his companions are venerating him. So, likewise, even the Khulafai Rashidin, who are the criterion of Iman. Although our Nabi Ali Sattu Wasalam has mentioned that Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnatil Khulafai Rashidin al Mahdiyin and Addu Alayha bin Nawajidi, or Kama Kuala Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam. And if you just look at the actions of the four Caliphs, the way they demonstrated their ta'deem and takreem, the way they expressed their love and reverence. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because it is this love, it is this reverence, reverence which is the criterion of Iman, which is the, the heart of Iman, the jan of Iman, the crooks and nucleus of Iman is expressing and demonstrating reverence with love towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you look at the example of uh, Sayyiduna Ali karamallahu ta'ala wajahu as when they were returning from Khaybar, 
Sayyiduna Ali Karamallahu Wajahu, he had not yet offered his Salatul Asr and the sun had almost set. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is lying with his head, with the sacred head in the lap of Sayyiduna Ali and he is resting. Sayyiduna Ali Karamallahu Wajahu has that honor of uh, holding and uh, having the Prophet وسلم, rest in his lap, having the blessed head resting in his lap. And at that moment, even though he has not offered his Asr Salah, he realizes that the sun is setting. It is almost about to set and I have not offered my Salatul Asr. That Salah which has been declared in the Quran as Salatul Wusta. And Allah says, Hafizu ala salawati wa salatil wusqa. That protect your salawat. Abdi namazon ki hifazat karo. Especially that salah which is known as the central prayer. And many of the Mufassirun have mentioned that the salatul wusta is salatul asr. It is the central prayer because it is the middle prayer of the day. The third from the five. So Sayyiduna Ali. Who could have understood the importance of Salah more than the one who has been declared as Babul Ilm? The Prophet says, Ana Madinatul Ilmi wa Aliyun Babuha and Ana Darul Hikmati wa Aliyun Babuha and I am the house of Hikmah and I am the city of knowledge and Ali is the door to that knowledge. He is the door to wisdom. Who could have understood the command of Allah, Aqeemu Salah? Establish Salah more than Sayyiduna Ali Karamallahu Wajahu. Yet, he understands it is his action which sacrifices Salatul Asr for the welfare and comfort of his master, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He realizes and he takes appropriate action which is that if my Salatul Asr becomes qaza if i need to offer that as a compensation later let it be but i will not make qaza of this moment in which i have been honored with having the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's blessed head rest in my lap he does not want to do qaza of this moment he considers this more important hence he sacrifices his salah However, the Prophet ﷺ being Mukhtar, being the one who has been blessed and bestowed with power from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to control the universe. When he awakens and when the Prophets of Allah sleep, the Prophet himself says that my eyes sleep but my heart remains awake. He, we know when we sleep, our heart is asleep, our eyes Everything is asleep. But when the Prophet ﷺ, when they sleep, he says that my heart does not sleep. La yanamu qalbi. And my eyes only sleep. He wake, awakens and says to Ali that what is it? Oh Ali, what is the matter? And he asks him, Asallayta ya Ali? O oh Ali, have you offered your salah? He says, La, ya Rasulullah, I have not. Immediately the Prophet ﷺ he knows and he is aware of the position of every Ummati. He raises his sacred hands in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those hands which have been referred to as Yadullah, the hand of Allah. In the Quran of Majid in Surah al fat those sacred hands are raised in the court of Allah. And him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Nabi, the Anbiya, or Mustajabu Dawat. And what can we say of the position, the grand status, the unique status? Of the one who is the leader of the prophets, how could his dua be rejected in the court by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is his beloved? He raises his hands and says, Allahumma, O oh Allah, inna hukana fi ta'atika wa ta'ati rasulika fardud alayhi shams. And O oh Allah, he, Ali, was certainly in your obedience and in the obedience of your messenger. So make the sun return. Make the sun return. This is the request, the humble request of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the court of Allah azza wa jal. And then the narrator of this hadith, 
she says that Asma bint Umais radiallahu anha that we saw that the sun had set فَرَأَيْتُهَا غَرَبَتْ ثُمَّ رَأَيْتُهَا طَلَاتْ that then we saw that it rose that after it had set the sun had set and it is not normal for the sun to be reversed but this is the Qudrat bestowed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is why Imam alayhi wa sallam says Suraj ulte paon palte Chand ishare se ho shak Chand ishare se ho chak Suraj ulte paon palte Chand ishare se ho chak Ande munkir dekh le Qudrat Rasulullah ki That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He is so approved in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has empowered him and whoever becomes Allah's then Allah becomes his as the hadith mentions man kana lillahi kana allahu lahu and who can be closer to Allah than his beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so this is the qudrat bestowed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Allah azza wa jal so the sun returned for the wali of Allah who is Sayyiduna Ali Karamallahu Wajahu who is the leader of the awliya who is Sayyidul Awliya amongst the Khulafai Rashidin the beloved husband of Sayyida Fatima Tul Zahra who is the leader of the women in paradise the queen of paradise the lady of paradise and the father of Hazrat Hasnain Kareemain Ridwanullah Ta'ala Ali Majmain the son returned at the point of Asr so that Sayyiduna Ali Karamallahu Wajahu was able to Pray and offer his Salatul Asr at his ease and leisure. Being a devoted servant of Allah. Rasulullah says he was in your service. Although we see on the surface it does not, it does not look like a service because he wasn't in, engaged in Salah. He wasn't praying Namaz. But this is obedience to Rasulullah This is an act in which he is venerating him. He is expressing ta'zim and takreem. He is expressing the greatness of Rasulullah Honoring him, dignifying him. And it is so approved by Rasulullah. That's why he calls it the Ta'at of Allah and the Ta'at of Rasulullah. The Ta'atika wa Ta'ati Rasulika. And in the Quran it is mentioned, May yuti'il Rasulah faqad ata' Allah. That whoever is obedient to the Messenger, then indeed he was obedient to Allah. That is obedience. We can see that in the Prophet's eyes. He could have admonished him. He could have criticized him. Reprimanded them and said, Oh Ali, do you not know the importance of Salah? Do you not realize that you have violated the command of Sharia? The command of Allah that Aqeemu Salah? You should have woken me up. Why didn't you? But the Prophet Ali Sallallahu did not do that. And he does not even speak on his own accord. He only says what Allah wants him to say. وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيُ يُوْهَىٰ so meaning this is approved and how was how do we know it was approved by Allah Azza wa Jal also because Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who made the sun return he could have left and said no you need to admonish your companion you need to reprimand him he needs to be criticized for this action because he has violated the sharia on the surface it appears that but no it wasn't it was an act approved and endorsed by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and further by Allah azza wa jal who is the khalik and the malik and the razik and the owner of the universe. The creator of the universe. He also endorsed and approved this action. And the son is waiting for Sayyidina Ali to complete his salah. This is what Imam Ahl Sunnah he records amongst his ash'ar. This incident and the incident of the one who has been declared as Aftarul Bashar Ba'd al Anbiya bit Tahik Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an who sacrificed his life in the cave of Thor for the welfare and comfort of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Yes, the Prophet sallam, did not allow his life to end at that point and he reversed the effects of that poison that would have killed him otherwise. And made him a martyr. The Prophet stopped that from happening, being the Mukhtar, being blessed with powers and empowered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when Sayyidi Allah Hazrat Imam Ahl Sunnah, Imam Ishq wa Muhammad, he 
witnessed and read such um, ahadith mubarakah then the ruh of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat it's like it also uh, it almost came into wajd and out of his passion and eagerness he writes that Mawla Ali ne wari teri neend par namaz Mawla Ali ne wari teri neend par namaz wo bhi asr jo sab se aala khatar ki hai ha tu ne and then he says Siddiq balke Siddiq balke ghar mein ja un pe de chuke aur hifz e ja to ja furuz e ghurar ki hai ha tu ne unko jaan unhe pher di namaz lekin par wo to kar chuke the jo karni bashar ki hai and then he takes the he extracts and elucidates the conclusion from this whole incident and says sabit hua jumla faraiz furu hai aslul usool bandagi ustaj warki hai looking at the incident of the uh, cave of thor when sayyiduna abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he is also blessed with this honor that the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam he only enters the cave after sayyiduna abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu anhu has entered the cave cleaned out the cave made it habitable for the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasalam for himself by cleaning it all out uh, by tearing uh, parts of his clothing cleaning out the cave which was full of webs and dirt as caves are and then he fills all the holes that are in the cave with pieces of his clothing all but one hole is left because he has run out of material from his clothes upon that hole he places his foot or his the heel of his foot as mentioned in the hadith thereupon he invites his master sallallahu alaihi wa sallam to come into the cave the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam comes into the cave when they are being pursued by the kuffar because there is a bounty on their head they want the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam naudhu billah they want to and assassinate him and they are out in pursuit of him they take refuge inside this cave the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam places his blessed head in the lap of sayyiduna abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he has that unique honor and thereupon he falls asleep while he is taking a nap Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq, he has his foot pressed firmly against the one hole which is visible, which he was not able to fill with his clothing because he ran out of material. A snake happens to come to the surface of that hole and begins to tap at the foot of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr. As Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, but as Abu Bakr Siddiq, he does not take any chances and he keeps his foot firmly pressed then the snake begins to bite Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu the venom is going into the foot of Abu Bakr Siddiq and causing excruciating pain to Abu Bakr Siddiq yet he is not twitching he is not even moving the slightest just look at this ishq look at the level of ishq and mahabbat the level of devotion of commitment of mahabbat of profound and intense love for his messenger for his master rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam that we are required to save our lives to try and save god and protect our lives the quran says wala taqtulu anfusakum do not kill yourselves and wala tulqu bi aydikum ila tahluka and do not cause yourself with your own hands towards destruction meaning do not thrust yourself with your own hands with your own doings towards destruction so to protect our lives it is for the ayn meaning it is mandatory upon us you know if we have to save our life and there is nothing else to eat we are even allowed to take one morsel or a few morsels depending on how much we need of haram we can consume consume haram to save our life this is how important it is to save your life who would understand understand this more than sayyiduna abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that my life is at stake now he realized that he is being bitten stung by a venomous creature possibly a scorpion or snake yet he keeps his foot firmly pressed against the hole so much so that he becomes overwhelmed with the pain 
and he does not cry because crying sometimes it is not done intentionally but yes his eyes they fill up with tears and they fall on the safe, sacred face on the chehrai nabvi the prophetic face of rasulullah the resplendent face of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and the ushak say that these are not tears in fact these are pearls because they were caused how did they emanate how did they come into existence out of pain endured by sayyiduna by uh, abu bakr siddiq by an aashiq e rasul for the protection of his mahboob to protect his mahboob he is taking that pain he is withstanding that pain this is why they say they, they weren't ordinary tears but we would say that these they were pearls and they fill up the eyes of sayyiduna abu bakr siddiq and overflow from his eyes onto the chehrai mustafa the chehrai nabi of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam upon which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he awakens and says ma laka ya aba bakr wa abu bakr what is the matter he says lu dightu ya rasulullah that i have been bitten ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and before he says those words he says fidaka ummi wa abi even in this extreme situation where his life is at stake he is in extreme excruciating pain yet look at the adab he is adopting he could have just directly said ya rasulullah i have been bitten but no he says fidaka ummi wa abi these were the words that the sahaba would use this is the path of nur the sirat e nur that all muslims are required to adopt how to venerate rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam how to demonstrate veneration to him how to dignify and honor him how to revere him learn it from the illustrious sahaba ridwan allah taala alayhi majmain as this has been approved and endorsed by allah and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam that ya rasulullah may my mother and father be sacrificed upon you i have been bitten the prophet ali sallallahu wasallam immediately applies his sacred and miraculous saliva upon the wound caused by the snake bite which provides immediate relief and comfort to abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu that he is cured this once again expresses the greatness of rasulullah ali sallallahu wasallam if we apply our saliva it will lead to in infections it will cause infections disease but look at the saliva of rasulullah ali sallallahu wasallam this is a separate chapter on its own it is a miraculous saliva that if it is applied to the affected eyes of sayyiduna ali those eyes become better if it enters the water in a well which is bitter water then that bitter water becomes sweet if it is applied on a limb which has been dislocated from the body in a battle the person goes to the prophet he applies a sacred saliva it reattaches the unattached limb look at the miraculous saliva this provides comfort and immediate relief to sayyiduna abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu but look at what he has done for the comfort and welfare of rasulullah he expresses his veneration his ta'zim and takreem and this has been admired by rasulullah he does not reprimand him he does not criticize him he does not tell him off and says what were you doing abu bakr you should have woke uh, you should have woken me up and you should have told me that you are being hurt you do not know that you are supposed to save your life but the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam realized that this is iman this is their iman this is the essence of iman what they are demonstrating to me this is what was admired by allah so when ala hazrat he sees this then he says that maula ali ne bari teri neend par namaz wo bhi asr jo ala khatar ki hai siddiq balke ghar mein ja un pe de chuke aur hifz e jaat ja faruz e qur'an ki ayaton ne unko jaan unhe pher di namaz par wo to kar chuke the jo karni bashar ki hai sabit hua jumla farais furu hai this establishes that all the farais or of secondary importance in front of the veneration of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says aslul usul bandagi ustaz bar ki hai the root of all obligations the crux of all obligations is servitude to the master rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam this is the path of nur and this is what all of us should strive to adopt may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to remain firm upon the ahlus sunnah wal jamaa and to emulate and uh, adopt the path of the sahaba e kiram ridwanullah taala alayhim ajmain in venerating rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdu lillahi rabbil alamin